Hi everyone, how are you doing? I'm Joey Pickard, German audio engineer and guitar player and today I decided to build a new tube amplifier myself. Um, I've done it before, two times. Um, I've built a tube amplifier on university where I learned how things work depending on uh, electrons going through schematics and a second amp I built it maybe four years ago um, to enhance that skills that I learned from the first amplifier and um, get it much closer to a real life gig amplifier that works for me but I never done it to get quite there. Uh, I'll show you some pictures of the two amps just to get an impression. This is uh, the first amp I built uh, on university. It is based on um, a hi-fi amplifier with ER34 output tubes. I just took a mono power amp with around 40-45 uh, watts and put four triad stages uh, for the gain on it for the lead channel and added, later added a fifth triode stage to enhance um, the gain but I never done it with that amp to get somewhere or some, to a sound that I like. After a few years I built it this one with KD88 uh, tubes with around 70 watts of output power um, two separate channels with a um, selectable boost, tube boost and multi-watt uh, selectable for each channel so I can select in the lead or in the clean channel if I want to play on pentode mode on 70 watts or triode mode around 30-35 watts. Um, it's a nice feature and the amp is performing for me like maybe the, the third choice of an amp. So I played it live, I can play with it live, but it's not totally there, it's not my sound totally, and that I want to change. And if you are interested in how I try to change that and build up the segments of a tube amplifier that can put out a lot of gain, a ton of gain, but that's the important thing, want to hear my charts through that gain so it shall not sound muddy or compressed at all or dark um, and, and not hearable it should have that open aggressive sound that the Mesa Boogie Rectifier has the PV150 uh, 5150 has or 6505 or which of, of the PVs and uh, Eddie Van Halen amps you like to take. Um, there I want to go with the sound of my amp and I don't want to use um, a pre-boost Ibanez Tube Screamer or something like this. The amp should stand on its own feet on the game um, to produce a modern metal gain. This, this is the main challenge. Everything else around this is um, added value. Okay, um, if you'd like to find out, then hang on. Uh, I think for each part I'm going short describe uh, why this is important or why I'm doing it like I'm doing it. Uh, so you can get a better uh, view over the things that are happen happening and maybe you can um, learn something about um, electronic devices like the old tubes. Um, I'm not the professional tube amp builder but I think I have a bit experience and I can uh, talk about it uh, so that other people can understand what what is happening so that's that's the, the point um, okay I hope you enjoy
okay, let's talk about the specs that I would put, want uh, to put in in this amplifier. Um, at first, I talked about it, a high distortion channel to get modern, uh, distorted, um, low-tuned um, sounds for mo modern metal music. Um, it should also have a um, clean channel that you can push up to a crunch sound and in each channel I want to have um, two voicings so maybe in the clean channel I have clean and um, dirty or, or just just a bit, little bit of, of, of brown sound and um, in the lead channel I'm going to have maybe a, a bit vintage sound vintage in modern thinking so it should already have a lot of ton of gain but maybe sound a bit uh, more like 80s high gain where you have other other mids and um, maybe the the more com compressed and not open and roaring sound um, funny that the Mesa Boogie rectifier and the PV5150 the metal amps on the market that are producing nowadays mostly every basic brutal metal sound are developed uh, at the end of the 80s maybe a bit before that or later but um, yeah this this two models uh, are definitely um, the one that I want to lay hands on and um, look look I look up to the sounds that these both amplifiers are doing. Um, maybe that's that's the way the voicing of of the lead channel of the um, of the channel two is going to. Uh, okay, so then uh, both channels. A third channel I want to add because it's uh, much more complicated to build up. You have uh, to do much more complicated switching and so stuff like that. This and um, I can live with two channels absolutely. Okay, uh, but both channels should have um, separate equalizing, so bass, middle and treble, and um, presence. I really like a good presence uh, uh, potentiometer to uh, select the crispness um, of a sound, and um, then of course uh, I really really like to have a master volume so don't just put uh, two channel volumes on that and that's it uh, I put a master volume on it um, then I didn't uh, I haven't tried it yet with this both amplifiers but with the third one I want to try it um, I'm putting on um, a reverb but uh, only a reverb for small occasions so so not a big thing um, I don't want to spend a lot of time in, in uh, reverb stuff my most mostly the time is going to uh, be the tweaking the lead channel uh, so I decided to um, buy a digital reverb tank unit that's a small one it's not uh, driven by a tube it can live on its own so it's just for tryout so I put that on it and I want to have uh, separate um, potentiometers for clean and lead channel for the reverb and the lead channel, this is a special function I'd like to add, uh, should have um, a switchable, foot switchable on off um, reverb and when you switch that on or off the reverb it should also perform a volume boost for soloing, um, so this won't um, perform in the clean channel, only in the lead channel. So um, when you play clean, you always have your value of uh, reverb on. I want to, ha I don't want to have to to switch it. Uh, it's it, it could could be on all the time, and in the lead channel, it should be switchable and it should have a boost. So when I'm playing on dry material and switch over to lead, lead tones I can uh, finally do two steps in just one switch okay 
then I want to add a noise gate because of uh, the um, ton of distortion I want to produce um, the amp is going to have a lot of noise um, so this would be uh, um, a main issue at first um, I'm going to perform maximum I can to reduce noise in, in the circuit from which source uh, noise came from um, and then after I reduce it to the minimum I could do I will add a noise gate and a noise gate is a bit complicated to perform with tubes also so I decided to search for uh, some ideas uh, to do it with um, with uh, um, two transistors and um, it's pretty it's it's not that big a deal I tried it out and I performed a little uh, tweaking with that and I'm going to use a um, optocoppler a photoresistance um, to perform the muting on the lead channel while the gate is closing and opening so there's not on the actual s signal uh, the transistors only the uh, photoresistance is performing the muting and the rest is uh, produced by the tubes okay then um, I also want to experiment a bit with um, negative feedback so I know the Mesa Boogie rectifier does not have in both channels negative feedback loop for those of you who don't know what a negative feedback loop is uh, I think I'm going to show it uh, when we talk about the um, phase inverter and the um, power tube section but uh, so far um, it's something that uh, smoothens out the distortion of the power amp and we play music, we are guitarists or bassists or whatever um, and we like maybe harmonic distortion in our sound so maybe it's a good way to don't perform that negative feedback I don't know, it's according how the preamp is sounding and the, the power tubes are responding on that uh, I like to find it out and maybe uh, put a switch on the amp to change between negative feedback and no negative feedback okay and then I thought about putting on a tremolo but I don't think so I, I'm, I'm not sure yet but let's find out okay that's everything from the chassis functions and um, this one I'm putting in uh, a, a small combo um, with one 12 inch speaker uh, just to have a, an amplifier for small small gigs uh, I know this is not going to sound that big but um, I don't have it yet uh, I have two heads and I like to have a combo amp and maybe I'm going to build it in into a head shell but um, for now I'm planning to build it into a combo and if it turns out good I'm building up in a second one and as a head maybe okay let's have a look at the schematics uh, let's take this one yes this is the preamp uh, I performed a bit of um, tweaking to the uh, layout of the pickard amp sub 2 and I don't want to go through it um, with further detail because I have to build it up and tweak it then uh, to really finally know it uh, the same thing I've done for um, everything in the amp so we have a preamp, we have a effect loop, uh, we have um, the phase inverter we have the reverb section, the power amp, and we have the. Uh, what didn't I mention? Ah, yeah, the power supply. 
So with without voltage and uh, current we can't uh, do or hear anything. So power supply. Okay. Uh, I go to the schematics and when I think I have the right parts selected everywhere I'm going to order it at uh, my local dealer which would be Tube Town. Okay, I now put together everything that I need. Uh, I finished uh, the optimization of my schematics and I now know which part I have to order and I put together um, all the parts and ordered it um, at Tube Town and it has become a very long list. What I didn't mention um, at the specs of the amplifier before but now they are mentionable. <laughs> um, I decided to go by uh, output transformer and power transformer from Tube Town. They are building their own transformers in Germany and uh, they're looking pretty good. I've uh, read a lot of good uh, comments about these transformers and I decided to take them. Uh, so now the output power of the amplifier is uh, fixed and it will be around 30 to 35 watts. Um, I switch over to my complete list and scroll a bit over it while I talk about the output transformer um, and the power. 35 watts is more than enough that I need for live playing. I have the PRS MT15 here. Uh, it has a bit more output power but not that much, around 20 watts. Um, and I can play it live without any problems to getting uh, into a range uh, where the volume is, is getting compressed or something like this. Uh, so um, 30 watts will be nice headroom and uh, playable and loud enough. And hopefully the output transformer is sounding open and not um, too compressed and compact with the uh, frequency response. That is uh, my concern. The costs are about 700 euros. Uh, it's not all for the amp, it's uh, tools that I need and, and wires for measuring and something like this. So um, the amp is a bit cheaper, but um, that's how it is. And hopefully everything arrives soon and I can start.